South Africa has one of the largest pay differentials in the world. Chief executives continue to take home huge pay packages. Their organizations may still struggle to provide shareholder returns. It's a complicated issue. Leon Lowe, Executive Director of the Free Market Foundation, joins us now for more. Morning, Leon. You wrote a column, I think, in Business Day where you talked about, uh, as usual with you, it was a bit against the trend and it threw a couple of stones into the bush and I think it uh, got a reaction. One of the things you said was, if you want to get rid of a, a chief executive and you have to give him a billion or half a million, a billion or whatever it is that you have to pay him to go, maybe that's a bargain, which sounds counterintuitive, but explain why. Yes, well, it, SA Airways is a good example, which runs at about a two billion rand a loss, uh, loss per year. And they've tied themselves into contracts with chief executives, C Coleman and later on, uh, I forget his name now. But the point is that if you're going to turn around a two billion loss into say a one billion profit and the way to get rid of the loss making executive is to pay them a billion mm. it's a bargain so uh, with chief executives actually the amount they get is irrelevant what matters is what they're worth it's like a tractor to a farmer all you ask is is it worth it and if chief executives aren't worth it you should pay them a lot to get rid of them and when you say our chief executives in south africa are paid a lot that's not true by the way the richest countries in the world and if we want to be rich if we want to be a success we actually need to start paying world rates to get world-class executives mm. well you're of the free market foundation is there a genuine market operating here because one sense is that the shareholders would not want to pay the chief executive any more than they had to of course yes yes and those are the people who pay so people who don't do the actual paying should keep their trap shut. Uh, the, the only people who can decide whether or not to buy a machine or buy a chief executive or buy a building or buy anything else, if you own shopping centres, to buy a shopping centre, are the people who spend the money. Yeah. And other people shouldn't stand by the touchline and say, oh, they paid too much for that shopping centre. Uh, that's what they're saying, in effect, when they say they paid too much for that chief executive. Uh, what a chief executive earns... Uh, and what the, for example, the cleaners earn is actually irrelevant. The differential is completely irrelevant. The question is, does the chief executive bring value? And the only people equipped to make that decision are the people who pay the chief executive. That is the shareholders and the owners. And if they want to buy cheap chief executives, they should expect to make losses. Of course, it gets complicated when you have banks that are too big to fail. So therefore, there's no punishment. Uh, it's also there's the issue of performance and shares. So you don't want to reward the chief executive for pushing up the share price in the next three months but not being sustainable down the line. It gets complicated then because the history generally, let's face it, in the corporate world has been that the, the penalties don't seem too obvious but boy the rewards are good often because of winds behind you that are raising your sector anyway. Yes, and there's a lot of shenanigans. And uh, in the private sector, as in the government sector and everywhere else, there are uh, people who are uh, performing scams and ripoffs, and there are chief executives who do that, who have effective control over their pay. That is very uncommon. And if they do, the people to blame are the shareholders. Uh, if they are not controlling what the chief executives get paid and how they get chosen, then the shareholders ought to pay the price, mm. which is a loss. Mm. And uh, does the market work? The answer is to the extent that it's up to them, it works. Now, when you talk about banks being too big to fail, uh, as I think one of the former um, American ministers of finance uh, said, Secretary for Finance, uh, make them smaller then. Uh, in other words, mm. let them fail. Mm. Uh, there is no reason why banks ought to be big. Uh, in Switzerland, there are thousands and thousands of small banks. Bankers are often little village businesses and mm. so on. This idea that banks have to be big, uh, they can be big, nothing wrong with it, yeah. uh, but they, nothing is ever too big to fail. And the biggest companies in the world, if you look at the Fortune 500 list, uh, the, the list 20 years later is a completely different set of companies. Many, many of the world's biggest companies fail and they should fail. That mm. is actually what's efficient. Yeah, because Failure is the most important thing in the economy. It's actually more important than success because it gets rid of bad ideas. And it clears out companies that don't adapt. It makes room for entrepreneurs and new companies, new ideas, new products uh, and so on. In South Africa, there's a particular emotional uh, overlay to this wage gap, and I think it goes back to apartheid. It goes back to when people who were doing the same work were paid differently, women for a start, but certainly black and white, and there was that, that racial hierarchy that was reflected in the, in the wages paid. So that's the extra dimension here. There's an extra resentment, perhaps, an extra 
um, emotional content to the debate. I'm glad you've raised that, David, because the interesting thing is that column of mine uh, apparently had more responses or comments than any other item in the paper during the week, I'm, someone told me. Uh, whatever it was, it was a lot. And uh, it all goes back to the South African racial baggage that we carry. Mm. Now, uh, it's actually a separate question is what do we do about racial inequality and the legacy of apartheid in South Africa? Now, one of the things you want to do if you want to increase the amount of wealth and you want to increase the wages of black South Africans and you want more black South Africans being chief executives is actually to stop worrying about whether it's high or low what they paid. It needs to be right what they paid and it needs to be right to alleviate poverty as fast as possible, bring about the end of the legacy, the racial legacy of apartheid, but in this discourse, uh, it, actually the legacy of apartheid is not relevant. It's like saying the legacy of apartheid determines which tractor to buy on a farm. Mm. Uh, what you pay chief executives is a separate question entirely. Of course, black chief executives are also up there now. Uh, and so they should be. That's I, right. I think any uh, decent South African wants to see uh, the end of the racial complexion associated with being a chief executive. One other question I, I w I'm always interested by, and companies, HR departments are very good at this in conjunction with the finance director, the quartiles, you know, we pay our, our directors or our chief executives, we're in the, th the, the th third quartile at the top, or we're in the top quartile. Of course, what quartile analysis does, it just pushes up those wages because everyone says, gee, well, we're in the lower quartile, so we've got to pay more. It causes wage inflation to have the comparison so maybe there shouldn't be such disclosure because it's actually costing shareholders and indeed inflaming this debate more. Yes, I think we need to get back to the idea that private companies are private and, and they shouldn't have to make disclosure. They should be like any private business or a partnership or a trust or whatever. It should be the business, the affairs of the private people. Public companies are a different matter. Mm. And let me just make this point which people tend to forget. The highest paid workers in the world by far are in the countries with the highest paid chief executives in the world. So high paid chief executives and high paid workers go together. That's the world's experience. In countries where chief executives earn a little, those are the impoverished backward third world countries of the world. Thanks to Leon Lowe, Executive Director of the Free Market Foundation. After the break, uh, we'll be crossing over to Nigeria and uh, we'll be back with you shortly.